Hello everyone and welcome to the Evangelist Nick Garrett channel. Today we are talking about Martin Luther and his protest against the institutional church of the 16th century. Martin Luther, known as the most prominent of the Protestant reformers, had first devoted himself to the monastic life as a young man. His father, having had him trained in the law, gave him a unique skill set beneficial to the Augustinian order to which he belonged, and later in life. Luther was sent to Rome in 1510 and 11 to deliver some legal papers, but for him this trip meant so much more. It was to be a sort of once-in-a-lifetime pilgrimage. One can only speculate the variety of thoughts that must have gone through his mind about what he would see. When he arrived in the hilly countryside above Rome, he was no doubt touched. Yet in little time, he was shocked when instead of the holy reverent city of God, he saw sexual relationships between clergy of all levels with prostitutes organized in their own hierarchy based on quality and cleanliness. That perversion went beyond graded prostitution for various levels of clergy. A noteworthy number of high ups in the church even had families on the side, contrary to oaths of celibacy and chastity. Even for clergy, pilgrimages to Rome had become what we would call today tourist traps with the selling of fake relics and indulgences. One writer characterized Luther's growing cynicism with the institutional church this way, quote, Within the city was a large staircase, which was said to have come from the house of Pilate. Those who climbed it on their knees were promised an indulgence from 1,000 years of penance. Luther, believing the superstition, decided to try the ascent. He had climbed halfway up, repeating the usual prayers when these words came to his mind. The just shall live by faith. He stood up and walked away slowly down the stairs. End quote. Early in his life, this type of observation would have offended Luther greatly. His early attempt to reform the church in Germany was done by a great deal of fasting, countless hours of prayer, and confession multiple times a day. As far as his personal journey was concerned, the more time he spent in the sacraments, the more he realized how sinful he was. Luther's life changed forever, though, when he was sent for higher education and he eventually became a doctor of theology in Wittenberg, Germany. The church there became Luther's home base for thinking, writing, and preaching through everything he and many predecessors saw wrong with the church when the Protestant Reformation reached its apex. During countless masses, he worked through the ideas that would become an entirely new way of thinking about God, just as Pope Urban II had done, and to an extent, Pope Innocent III. Luther specifically challenged indulgences, simony, and devotion to relics, issues of scripture versus tradition and doctrine, justification by God's grace through faith, and he also challenged the papacy itself. The single most important doctrine that Luther developed over time that placed him at odds with the church was his doctrine over justification. By the 16th century, the Roman Catholic Church had made membership inside her fold the justification for salvation. The 5th century Roman Church had adopted the term Vicarius Christi, or Vicar of Christ. The term that had meant the Holy Spirit given to the apostles to the earliest centuries of believers. Now the Roman Latin Church used the term to define the Pope as the representative of Christ on earth. As Luther came to see it, this type of open aberration, when taken with the behavior of the church from the previous 1200 years, meant that Rome, the city on seven hills, was the beast, and the Pope was the Antichrist himself. He picked up on the work of theologians like John Wycliffe, who asserted that Revelation was in fact talking about the Roman Church when it spoke of Mystery Babylon, the whore, the beast. Justification itself became the top Reformation theology, and the perversion of the papacy itself perhaps second. Luther's study of scripture, 
and failed connection to forgiveness after mastering the ritual Roman Catholic sacraments had led him to form his doctrine around the idea that justification was a gift from God directly to the individual, and it alone was the means of salvation. God's grace occurred irrespective of one's attempts to earn it, and was not accompanied by anything other than one's faith as the mechanism. Moreover, it had nothing to do with the earthly church, but was earned for man by Jesus Christ on the cross at Calvary. It was finally the idea that indulgences could be bought to offer forgiveness that compelled Luther to write out all his concerns, walk over to the thick heavy door of his castle church, and post his list among the other items of interest. He was initially only seeking debate on the matter. There was a sense that was to be cathartic personally, beneficial to Luther's students, and only indirectly an attack on Rome. By that time, Luther had easily become one of the most popular preachers in the area around Wittenberg. He was bold, honest about personal faith versus sacramental obligation, and just wanted to know God and find the truth. When Luther's 95 Theses arrived before the Pope, it is telling that he reacted at all. What had Luther said that out of all of Christendom, the ranting of a theologian in Germany over indulgences was even read. The Pope immediately issued a gag order on the Augustinians in an attempt to silence them from speaking about what had grown over time into quite public criticism of the church, regardless of what Luther had been doing. Next, the Pope released a papal bull, Compostquam, reminding all Christians of his, the Pope's, authority to administer indulgences. Meanwhile, likely in shock and slightly embarrassed, Luther wrote to the Pope to clarify his words. He was not interested in tearing the church apart or in being insubordinate. He actually loved the church and loved many things about it. He was simply hoping that by discussion, some of the less favorable defects of the church could perhaps be improved. Most of all, he was gravely concerned for the reputation of the papacy. It truly seemed in his mind that if he could just tell the Pope what he was hearing, seeing, and reading, that perhaps the Pope, moved with penitence, would institute some meaningful program or call a council to address their issues. An inspection was arranged for Luther to go before the Pope. Yet before Luther's audience could be scheduled, it was canceled just as quickly and the problem handed back down to the local clerical administration. Luther was instead sent to Cardinal Cajetan in Augsburg, Germany. The goal from the church's perspective was to silence Luther before he could spread these teachings further. Now that the issue had been dropped down to a regional and local one, the goal for the lower officials was to impress the higher-ups in the church with how effectively they could squash what was quickly growing into a movement around Martin Luther's words and ideas. Words and ideas we will learn more about in the second installment of Martin Luther. Thank you so much for listening. Please subscribe. Check out my work on Patreon, BitChute, Vimeo, and Twitter. And I look forward to talking to you on the next one. Thanks.